Welcome to Take 5, where we daily consider devotional thoughts from Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost for His Highest. Today is December 8th, and the title of today's devotional is The Impartial Power of God. By one offering, He has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, verse 14. Oswald Chambers begins with a stern word against any who would consider the forgiveness of sin as being accomplished by a work of their own. He says we trample the blood of the Son of God underfoot if we think we are, we are forgiven because we are sorry for our sins. By no means is our feeling sorry for what we've done going to stir God to forgive us. Paul wrote that godly sorrow leads to repentance, but sorrow is not the repentance. The only reason for the forgiveness of our sins by God and the infinite depth of his promise to forget them, Chambers tells us, is the death of Jesus Christ. The author of Hebrews tells us, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Paul wrote to the Colossians, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Chambers lets us know that our repentance is merely the result of our personal realization of the atonement by the cross of Christ, which he has provided for us. Repentance is the reaction once we've realized within ourselves the work that Jesus has done for us. It's in Christ we are for, it is in Christ that we are given the wisdom to see that uh, all this and that God has that done, that God has done for us. And then once we realize that Christ has become our righteousness and sanctification and redemption, the limitless joy of God begins in us. Joy is produced in the believer once there is true and complete repentance. And wherever the joy of God is not present, the death sentence is still in effect. If God's joy is not present in the believer, something is still wrong. Something has not been surrendered. Dr. Chambers continues, No matter who or what we are, God restores us to right standing with himself only by means of the death of Jesus Christ. There is no one who has been born of natural means who is above the need of the blood of Jesus. No one is too good, too rich, too smart, too pretty. God does this, so he says, not because Jesus pleads with him to do so, but because he died. Jesus doesn't ask God to overlook anyone's sins or ignore them because they are a good person. Only in his death is there forgiveness. Our author reminds us all the pleading for salvation, which is deliberately ignoring the cross of Christ, is useless. To plead for salvation by any other means outside the cross of Christ is fruitless. As Chambers says, it is knocking at the door other than the one which Jesus has already opened. To claim good works, responsible living habits, being a good person, none of those will create another door of entrance into salvation. Some will say, but I don't want to come that way. It is too humiliating to be received as a sinner. God's response through Peter is, there is no other name by which we must be saved. Over the course of these past few devotionals, as Chambers has presented the idea of it being too lowly a means by which to be saved, I've been considering the truth of it. People would prefer to see heaven as earned through being a good person, a nice person, a helpful person. They push against the fact of it being a free gift, but only received when you realize your need due to sin. I'm not going to be thought of as a bad person, a sinner who needs repentance. I want to be some form of a good deed. I want it to be some form of a good deed that I gain heaven. O.C. says it cannot be earned, just accepted. Chambers informs us that in our identifying with the death of Jesus Christ, it means that we must die to everything that was never a part of him. Here's where there is deliberate failure in understanding the life of the Christian. It is to be one lived like Christ, not only he in us, but we in him. O.C. says that God is... <clears throat> God is just in saving bad people only as he makes them good. God doesn't save people just to leave them as they are. Our Lord does not pretend we are all right when we are all wrong. Never does God say, oh, they had good intentions and a kind heart. 
No, as Dr. C closes, the atonement by the cross of Christ is the propitiation God uses to make unholy people holy. This is God's desire, making a new you in his image. Thanks for being here today. Now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.